stuck here. It's so good to see you. You too, Ayana. I haven't seen you since graduation. Time flies. I know, three years. Where have you been? At home, mostly. What, really? Fetal made off Broadway, right? I thought you were still in New York. Yeah, after graduation, we were in New York for eight months. Uh, and then I spent some time home in Atlanta, and then I came back here to DC. Ugh, I wish I could have done it with you. Me too. <laughs> but theater companies all over were just ready to snatch you up. I can't believe Fetal started off as your senior thesis. It was fucking brilliant. The whole journey that Summer goes through. She was such a challenging role to play, but I'm so grateful I had the opportunity. Well, thank you. So what have you been up to? I was so excited when I saw your headshots and in for this project. Yeah, when I saw your name on this, I signed on right away. <laughs> After graduation, I was in Black is the New Shakespeare over at Star City, and then I did this show over at ITH, and then actually I was just in The Widow Woman here at Atlantic Line Theater. Booked and busy. <laughs> so what are you thinking for this show? I haven't gotten a script yet, but I know you have written something genius. <laughs> yeah, I just finished the first rehearsal draft last night. Uh, let's wait until the director gets here. Oh, come on, give me something. No, no. I wasn't able to be there for the final selection process, so I don't even know who was chosen. Uh, Liz Vernon, you know her, the artistic director. Yeah, I know Liz. She got to pick the director, so I want to wait to run through the show with both of you. Ugh, okay, fine. <laughs> Seems like whoever it is is running on CP time. Oh, I think the director's joining. Hi, sorry, sorry, sorry. My Keurig just decided to hate me this morning. It's fine. Adam! Hi! Jack here. Hi, Autumn. Oh my god, you look so good. How are you? Hey, Yana, I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I've been hearing your name so much lately. Didn't you just direct Rusty Chain at that experimental theater in New York? Yeah, it was a great experience. And you, you were just in that um, Widow show not too long ago. Uh, I didn't get the chance to see it, but I heard great. Can we get started? It's just that we're already running behind. And I apologized. And I said it was fine. I understand your need to feed your caffeine addiction in the morning. Um, okay. Well, let's begin. <sighs> okay. So first I wanna thank you both for signing on to workshop my play. Um, I'll just run through a few things with y'all. So we have a week to put on a staged reading of my play. It's just us three, but if Liz likes the final product, then she'll pick up the show for next season. That's so cool. Now, Jacquier, tell us, what is this show about? The play is about a working black actress named Amari Smith. She's in a coma the entire time, living out the last few moments of her life. Her subconscious takes her on a journey through past mistakes and accomplishments. And though she can hear the everyday sounds of the hospital around her, her body has trapped her in a constant state of agonizing reflection. It's a metaphor for being black and unheard. And it's called Working Girl, the re-education of Aunt Jemima's niece. Wow. Wow. How do you come up with these ideas? Yeah, how do you? What's that supposed to mean? This will be another good role to play. I'm so excited. You always create interesting characters. Oh, oh wow, thank you, Ayana. You make such compelling stories for black people. It's refreshing to play a role that's new and hasn't been done over and over again. I'm so excited to dive in. So I'm emailing y'all the script right now, but before we read through it, I wanna let you both know that there'll be a few script changes on page 13 and 44. Wait, why? Uh, Liz was just a bit concerned about some of the language. She thought a few of the phrases were a bit extreme. 
Like what? Well, defund the police. Really? How is that extreme? Well, you know, AOT is progressive, but not that progressive. <laughs> They're just not ready for political statements like that. It's not a political statement. It's something that actually needs to happen for the survival of the Black community. These conversations have to be had, and ALT's rich white audience needs to hear them. I agree, but I feel like saying something like that can immediately turn the audience away. I mean, we do want the show to make it into the season, right? Yes, but we shouldn't coddle the audience. We're not coddling them. We're if just. If the show is about being black and unheard, why are you already letting your voice be silenced? This is not up for debate. I am the playwright. You're the director. It's my script. You're right. It is all yours. <sighs> Anyways, let's do the first read through. Okay. Act one, scene one, darkness. Okay, so I'm thinking we start today's rehearsal off with some table work and then try to put the opening moment on its feet. All right, cool. Sounds good. Okay, great. So, Ayana, I'm interested after the first read of the text in what your immediate observations are. What are the first things you notice? Mm, so, I'm interested in the dual setting, how it's simultaneously taking place in Amari's hospital room and also in her mind, and how my character is aware of being in both places. Very good. Yeah, absolutely. What else do you notice? It feels like I don't want to be in either of those places. Mm. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to be? Elsewhere. Somewhere where I'm not destined to be ignored like a hospital room, but also not somewhere where all I can think about is my internal monologue and my suffering, like my mind. I love that. Where is elsewhere? Where can Amari Smith feel, not ignored, but loved and respected and valued outside of your own mind? I don't know. That's perfect. We're gonna figure that out together. Let's look closer at- May I interject? Uh, the answer is in the text. It's heaven. The elsewhere is heaven. That's why she dies. Oh. Well, actually, I think that's up for interpretation. There's nothing in the text that indicates she's better off in heaven, or if that's even where she ends up. I'm telling you that's where she ends up. I'm the playwright. The text is not telling me that, and I'm the interpreter. So then what's the alternative? She dies. Which, since we're workshopping this, I think is an unnecessary ending. Uh, yeah? The synopsis literally says her body traps her in a constant state of agonizing reflection in the hopes of euphoric acceptance. Uh-huh. But euphoric acceptance is pretty broad. She might just make peace with her past, or maybe she just gets high. She's in a coma. Morphine. So, is my character trying to find the elsewhere? Yes. No. <laughs> um. I want to follow that lead about the dual settings. Amari Smith is in a coma because her white co-workers ignored her complaints of pain. Now she's in a white room with white doctors in a white gown, talking and talking and talking, and nobody hears her. It's a metaphor for being a black artist, for being seen but not heard, for being surveilled but not listened to. Surveilled? Like Fairview? Like Fairview. No, not like Fairview. I mean, I like the show. I just hated seeing it. I can't think of it without thinking of old white people telling me to hush. Telling you to hush? Yeah. Well, not me. It was my freshman year roommate. I went to go see it with her and it was her first time at the theater so she didn't know the rules or whatever. So she was reacting to the play as black people do. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> and all of a sudden, we see this little frail white hand reaching toward us from the row behind. And my roommate feels a grab on her shoulder. Uh uh-uh. uh. And she said, <laughs> She hushes her like she's some five year old. And now she told y'all to shut the hell up. What did you do? We shut the hell up. I didn't know what else to say. Mm. White people so crazy. Like, what are you touching me for? No type of physical boundaries. Like, you can shush me in a black play for black people, but you can't keep your hands to yourself. And that is just like what Amari Smith is dealing with in Working Girl, the re-education of Aunt Jemima's niece. Right. The play. Uh, let's break for 10 and then we will put this opening moment on its feet. Thank you, Tim. You want to know why there's no black people in your theater seats? You want to know why it's nothing but 50 plus year old white couples on date night? What makes the theater experience so troubling for black people is that we are told that theater can only be consumed and digested in one way. When I step into a theater space, I'm expected to put on a performance for you and your house manager and your ushers. I'm expected to be the most palatable version of myself, the version that does not make you uncomfortable because your theater space was not built for me. We have to wear our nice clothes, no sweats, no jeans, no leggings, or those weird jeggings. We make sure that we eat beforehand because we can't sneak in popcorn and candy. Silence is expected as soon as lights are up. Reactions are kept to a minimum. No, mm-hmm. No, she knows she's not in love with him. No, girl. But we know that's not how we digest entertainment. Sometimes I are, yeah, or go on with your bad self. It's needed, it's necessary. It's a natural reaction to say that I am enjoying this. I am relating to this. I am seeing, experiencing something here in this theater that I would not have gotten elsewhere. Otherwise, what's the point? Netflix in my bed is waiting right at home for me. Where I can wear what I want, eat what I want, and react the way I want to react. No, girl! Don't go through that door! I attend theater because it's a conversation for everyone on stage and off. Watching. Experiencing. When I react, I'm letting the actors on stage know that I'm watching and experiencing this with them, not just staring at them. I actually wrote a poem after the whole Shushgate experience. I'm no Maya Angelou, but here it goes. Roses are red, violets are blue. Shush me one more time, white lady, and it's gonna be me. And you. Yes. Hey, Rob, I got the group together for the BIPOC piece. I'm giving them a week to work it before they share a staged reading and we consider it for next season's lineup. They wanted a black stage manager, but all the blacks we usually hire want more than the stipend we're offering. So they'll be fine on their own for the week. It's just a workshop, even though Ayana is equity, but we know she'll do whatever we tell her. (laughs) Update the budget to reflect this. I'm hoping after we make sure it's not too black power for our audiences, we can convince them to add a character. We need to meet our casting quota before our equity and diversity audit. Let me know what you think. Hey. Hey, what's going on? Did you see that email that we just got? Email? From Liz Vernon. Go look. Oh, wow. How did we get this? I think she hit reply all instead of forward. Shit. So what do you think? I... I don't know. Well, I'm feeling really conflicted. Conflicted? Ayana is equity, but we'll know she'll do whatever we tell her. Is that really what Liz thinks of me? 
I guess so, if that's what she said in her private email. Is that necessarily a bad thing? Yes! It means she thinks she can walk all over me because I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm always early, I agree to extra rehearsals, I take out my braids. Doing all those things was supposed to make me a respected actor. You are a respected actor. People know you're talented. So shouldn't I be treated like it? Don't you feel tricked, Jock here? She's hoping her show is not too black power for her audiences. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It means that Atlantic Line's patrons are old and white and don't want four plays confronting racism and white supremacy in a season. And that's okay? I mean, no. But... I'm sorry I don't have anything more uplifting to say. I'm disappointed. I'm just not surprised. It's just... The way it is. Right. That's okay. Okay. I'll see you in rehearsal tomorrow, Ayana. Good night. Okay, so I know we can't start today's rehearsal without talking about that uh, email we got last night. Yeah, that was... Really bad. So, do we want to unpack it? Talk about our feelings? Like, and then what? Be mad? Get over it? Like, are we going to quit? Quit? Yeah, quit. I think we can consider it. No, nobody's quitting. <laughs> oh, we're not? No, we can unpack the email or whatever Autumn said, and then we can move on and keep developing my show. Knowing that we don't have a stage manager because they don't feel like paying a Black person to do it. Look at the room we're in right now. All Black people. Free reign to develop the piece before Friday. Everything New Vanguard Theater would have given us, but on an award-winning stage. How often do you see that? New Vanguard Theater? Free reign? Jacquier, you took Liz's changes to the script the first day. That's free reign? Accommodating the artistic director who's already worried the piece is too Black power? Wait a minute. Like, this is exactly why I do experimental theater. It's about freedom. It thrives on making bold choices and starting conversations. It's like pulling teeth to get a paying audience, but yay, freedom. Are we just workshopping this piece to get shut down so she can come in and change the work we did to add a character to that's the not, one woman show? That's not gonna happen. How do you know it's not gonna happen? Why did you bring up New Vanguard Theater? <sighs> They were just one of the options to workshop the piece. One of the options? Another theater approached you to produce this? They offered, but they're not even a Lort theater yet. It'd be community theater. That's not what I want to make. Oh. What do you want to make? <laughs> Honestly? Theater that pays my rent? I want a Lucy Lowe. You want me to go from off-Broadway and accolades to new vanguard community theater? I don't remember you being this elitist in undergrad. And I don't remember you being this frustrating. Should we break? It feels like now's a good time to break. Yeah, let's break, because this actually isn't even up for debate. Of course it isn't. See y'all tomorrow. <laughs> 